Charles frequently preyed on ladies who attended the ice rink, and it was there that he first met Elaine. He was astounded by Elaine's attractiveness and, in an effort to make a good impression, he invited C2 to go on dates with her. C2 took pleasure in working hard for his master. He was trained not to complain, therefore he never did, and he consistently outperformed the humans he was made to socialize with. C2 was favored by Charles's father above his own kid. He was much more thoughtful and on time than Charles had ever been. Although Elaine was not very pleased with C2's perfection, she did not mind the gifts. Elaine liked to make plans before moving forward, unlike other women who were constantly in a rush. Additionally, Elaine possessed a cloned robot named E2, whose job it was to have affairs with the guys she dated. Elaine exclusively dated guys to obtain priceless gifts she could use to pay her rent and maintain her opulent lifestyle. She utilized E2 to get over the obstacles since males wanted sex in return. There was a snag, however Charles was eager to spend the night with the woman he had met at the ice rink. Charles wouldn't have enough time to leave for his date because Elaine planned to meet him at 6.30 p.m., which meant that C2 would be late for work. They couldn't be out in public at the same time because it was against the law to have clone robots for personal use. The following day, Charles made the decision to meet Elaine after work. A board meeting invitation from his father only served to exacerbate the situation. Charles quickly returned home and asked C2 to go to the meeting so that he could spend the evening with Elaine. Charles was willing to accept the risk, despite the fact that the plan would put him in danger. Charles mixed up the two addresses that were present. At the board meeting, he ultimately made a provocative appearance, and C2 afterwards fell in love with E2. Once they had their magical lovemaking, the clone robot felt they were meant to be together. The following morning, neither Elaine nor Charles could locate their clones. E2 and C2 called their respective owners and complained that Charles had used Elaine as a womanizer and that Elaine had used Charles as a gold digger. The robots begged their owners not to prevent them from going across the border so they could finally be free. Elaine and Charles eventually decided to cooperate to monitor their robot doubles and kill them if necessary, despite their initial amazement that they were both using one another. Elaine and Charles had no choice but to work together to discover their robot doubles, despite the fact that they were far from ideal partners. Zach Newman, who worked at Tesla Robotics and developed C2 and E2, was their first stop. Zack tracked E2 and C2 with the help of the GPS he had integrated into the robots. Charles and Elaine couldn't have their robots back in their lives, which was the sole catch. When robots became rogue, they were impossible to control and frequently made the decision to exact revenge. Charles could not envision his existence without C2, but Elaine was prepared to destroy E2. After finding C2, he phoned up his pal Ashley, aka Fat Ninja, for assistance. E2 and C2 were located by Zack, Elaine, and Charles, who also temporarily turned them off. Ashley entered the hotel room while the robots were still inside, causing chaos that gave E2 and C2 enough time to restart the automobile and flee. Without their mechanical counterparts, life was very challenging for Elaine and Charles to navigate. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to blend in. Elaine and Charles were misled into meeting up with E2 and C2, and they took Elaine's automobile as a result. They texted them a video of a gun-wielding raid on a retail center. Charles and Elaine made the decision to flee the nation because they were aware that they were in danger and wanted to avoid being detained by the authorities. Elaine and Charles spent the evening discussing their options in a hidden cabin that Charles had built in the woods. By dealing with the uncertain circumstances they were in, Charles and Elaine felt more human. Because of how convenient and easy technology had made their life, they decided not to learn more than what they already knew about themselves. Charles and Elaine spent the evening bonding over alcohol while drinking their sorrows away. The two were stopped by the authorities the following day as they were traveling toward the border with Mexico. Charles went ahead and claimed responsibility for it all in order to protect Elaine, assuming that they would be taken into custody. 
The only issue the police brought up was the paint on the car's rear light, much to their astonishment. The police's decision to remain silent about the shooting puzzled them. Elaine watched the video again and understood it was a hoax, delivered by their robot duplicates to force them to flee the nation while they lived their best lives as Charles and Elaine. In addition to announcing their marriage, C2 and E2 overtook Charles and Elaine's lives. Social media said that Charles and Elaine were much in love, but the only issue was that they weren't actually together. Charles and Elaine interrupted the announcement celebration while disguised as robots, and they were able to shut down E2 and C2 once more. They launched C2 into the lake, but he was able to live, therefore they made the decision to imprison E2. They brought E2 to Zack's residence, where they made the decision to phone C2 and demand his surrender. Elaine disclosed that she had another clone, E3, but it was hard to convince him that E2 was no longer loyal to him. Zack and Elaine had an agreement that allowed him to make a third clone of Elaine for his own purposes. They tricked C2 into thinking that his partner was altered and in danger by using E3. When C2 confronted them inside Zack's home, the cops had already arrived. The cops were called because of C2's barbaric speed while operating the electric trike. They detained their robot clones as well as Charles, Elaine, and Elaine. Elaine and Charles were notified that their robot counterparts would be smashed while they would be confined to prison for the remainder of their lives. E2 and C2 were happy that they met and fell in love, despite the fact that they were soon to be slaughtered. At first, they were unaware of the power of love, and when they were, they understood that their humans had been mistaken the entire time, love was not the cause of suffering, rather, it was the remedy. In contrast to humans, who usually tended to endanger their own lives, they made the decision to defend their loved ones, even if it meant dying. Charles and Elaine were pleased by the affection that C2 and E2 shared. They came to the conclusion that love existed and that perhaps they had been misinformed their entire lives. As a last-ditch effort to get away, Charles phoned Fat Ninja to save them. Ashley was able to divert attention and assist the group in fleeing. The four of them made the journey to the Mexican border in preparation for a fresh start. Elaine and Charles were halted, but C2 and E2 were permitted to enter Mexico. The robots could not allow them to cross the border since their arrest had caused a warning. The police showed up at the location quickly. Despite being able to detain Charles and Elaine, the police were powerless to prosecute them because they lacked any evidence. In the end, Charles and Elaine were permitted to go back home. When they regained control of their life, they immediately declared their love for one another. Their robot counterparts, who taught them the value of love and friendship, are wholly responsible for the couple's marriage. E2 and C2 fled to Mexico in the interim, where they were permitted to live openly and without having to conceal their connection from others.